Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. D'Anthony, D'Anthony. What's up? How you feeling? I'm fine, thanks. We got uh, we got your boy on today. Yeah, I've been talking to uh, Mr. Mike Ritland for a while from yeah. Mike, Mike Drop Podcast. Uh, he is one of the nation's experts on training military working dogs. You may remember him from... Fox News, where he added a little quip to the end of his his commentary after the Al Baghdadi raid, he kind of went in on a, a lot of shows to talk about military working dogs and what they do and shit like that. And he decided to uh, drop the the well known fact that Epstein didn't kill himself <laughs> at the end of his speech. So it's pretty funny. It went viral. Uh, he's got an awesome podcast called Mic Drop. You guys have requested him to be on the show. For a while, because we we had posted something actually that we had posted that video that went viral on our his, yeah, yeah. Instagram feed, and everybody's like, "Dude, I don't understand why you get, get him on the show." And we're like, "Well, fuck, let's try." It. We're busy and he's busy. It's like we have a list four hundred people long to get on the show, and there's only three hundred sixty five days in the goddamn year. You guys need to calm down. <laughs> but we will sake. get them. Yeah, we we'll, got it. We will get them eventually. eventually we got we'll Mike on the show out. today, um, and then also we, we we hear you on sponsors. Um, there is a bunch of sponsors that get pitched to us all the time of like, hey, man, can you guys get these sponsors on the show so we can have a promo code for them? Um, this we, we did. We, we try to do it every single time this week. Uh, we've got Duke Cannon. You guys have asked for Duke Cannon forever mm -hmm. ad nauseum. So finally, we reached out to Duke Cannon. We were like, look, man, our audience loves your products. They would love a promo code for your products. Uh, Duke Cannon is a veteran owned <laughs> company. They make the best body wash on the planet for the fucking shower. Jesus Christ, man. This is, this is as good as it gets. Mm -hmm. This is the first time I've ever... You've jacked half the box as soon as it showed up. Uh, yeah, I use their products anyway. So it's like, especially... So Naval Supremacy is the best smelling soap that I've ever used ever. in my life. Of all time. I love it so much. Yeah. Um, and everybody, I actually wore it one day, and someone's like, "Are you wearing cologne?" I'm like, "No, I, this is what the fucking the stuff body smells wash. like. It smells great." Yeah, and it, it, again, we've gotten a million messages that just says, "Dude, if you could do can, it'd be fucking awesome." Uh, we we not only have them on, we have a promo code for you. It is Drinking Bros for fifteen percent off at DukeCannon.com. That's D U K E C A N N O N dot com. DukeCannon dot com. Promo code Drinking Bros. 15% off, and you get free shipping with orders over $35. Um, each one of these things, and they're huge, by the way, well, the, which is great. It, the, it's huge, but it's also the, the soap is super thick. Yeah. So if you think about how you usually lather on body, if you're using like a loofah or something mm -hmm. and body wash, you usually like pump out five, six times. This stuff, it's like a fucking quarter size, maybe maybe a half dollar size, and it like... Fluffs, it, it like soaps the whole thing. I don't know how they do it. The viscosity of it is is insane. Yeah. And uh, everybody loves it. We, look, we finally got them on the show. And I know part of their proceeds at the end of the year go to veteran charities and things like that. Yeah. Um, they're the best in the business. They are on our show, hopefully for the long run. But we reached out to them. They were cool enough. Drinking Bros is the promo code for 15% off every order over $35. You get free shipping. Mm -hmm. uh, each are, are 9 bucks, but or you can get all four for 30 yeah, if you haven't used it before, I would recommend getting all four because I personally like Naval Supremacy, which mm -hmm. you'll notice isn't on the desk because I've stolen you it already. Jacked it, you jacked but it. Uh, all these smell good, so I guess it just depends on you know what you like. Yeah, so I, I would get all four of them, and I mean it's like thirty bucks. Who cares? Old Glory is my jam. That's that's the one I go to. Yeah, that's my go to. Uh, DukeCannon dot com promo code <laughs> Drinking Bros fifteen percent off. Welcome to the show, and and thanks, man, for. Uh, for coming on, uh, for real. Um, they, they were nice enough after we reached out. Uh, next up, we got ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Best mattresses in the business. Yeah, they've really been on one lately. Fuck, have they for ever? For the whole year of 2020, actually. They started out the year by extending their Christmas sale yeah. to like the, like the middle of February. Because and one drinking bro emailed and said, yeah. hey, dude, I missed the Christmas yeah. sale. And they were like, well, fuck it. We'll put it up for... Yeah. Uh, you know, two more weeks. They um, kept it going through Valentine's Day, and then all this stupid horse shit happened with the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, and they just kept it going, and now they've been reaching out to our customers individually, sending them 
Chick-fil-A and cheeseburgers and shit. Yeah, because a, a bunch of our customers, if you guys wrote a great review and you got an email from Ghostbed that was like, hey, man, where do you guys live and what do you want? Um, they were just sending out free food. I got Chick-fil-A. From Rich Bernstein, by yeah. the way. If you got an email from Rich Bernstein or rich at ghostbed.com or whatever mm -hmm. his email address is, that's a real person. It is. And, and he sent like, fuck, man, like 40 people food. And it was awesome and unexpected. And uh, they're just, it's a great company. Look, we've had them for, I don't know how many years at this point. Uh, maybe four, three and a half, three, maybe some, somewhere in there. I mean, it's been a while. We love them. I, it, <laughs> it, when, it, when you get a product like this, that is, uh, you know, kind of expensive and lasts a very long time, it better be fucking good. We, yeah. we wouldn't do it if it wasn't. And, uh, we all have the mattresses. We all have the, the pillows and the sheets. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can get the adjustable bases for 25% off. Everything is 25% off there. And, uh, it comes in a box. So it's Corona free. Um, and then as always, there's a 36 month pay as you go program, no interest with that. And that is applicable with the 25% off everything. So, you know, you got that stimulus check, brother, you can, uh, jack up a ghost bed if, if you're stuck inside for a while, as I know it's on a state by state, uh, case right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, so go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Last but not least, we got Raycon.com. That's by Raycon.com <laughs> forward slash drinking bros yeah. for ours. We have our own personal URL. Buy Raycon.com forward slash drinking bros. Best wireless headphones in the business. They've got a new set of the E25s out that, that are all white if you're into like all white stuff. or They've got, I don't even know how many colors they have now. Yeah, but I know that the E25 is markedly better than the E50, and I was pretty happy with the E50. That's I mean, same. The battery um, life is good. It's loud as shit, and the price was only like a ten dollar mm. difference. Yeah. Um, look at buyraycon.com forward slash drinking bros. It, it's fifteen percent off, and knocks them down to like sixty five bucks. And it, they come in a rechargeable case. Yep. So all you do is pop them in the case, and then you're good to go. It's not like you have to wall charge them or, or any of that yep. other bullshit. And we know what you guys are doing at home right now. We know. Yeah, we know everybody's bored and you're, you're on your phone or your computer or so you're listening and watching something. Listening Pornography. To something. Probably yeah. Maybe that, maybe, <laughs> maybe something else. You're yeah. also trying to drown out the sound of the children that you now regret having. Yep. Or you're uh, in, in the home gym working out, whatever it is. Yeah. These are the best there is. Yep. Uh, go to buy Raycon.com forward slash drinking bros, 15% off. That'll get you 15% off the headphones. Um, and, and those will ship right to your house mm -hmm. in, in two to three days. Tops. And you'll be up and at him. Uh, I love this interview, by the way. Yeah, it was really good. I mean, he's... Uh, he reminds me of you. A little bit. He's very stone... F I mean, we, we have a very similar personality, but he is a fucking expert when it comes to this dog stuff. He's not some fucking jack wagon from your neighborhood that, like, oh, yeah, train dogs for the local police department. This dude trains dogs that, that start at $85,000 a piece retail. Yep. And uh, for... Numerous government agencies, numerous local governments, uh, and private citizens, and security firms, and all kinds of shit. Former Navy SEAL, he knows what he's doing. And it's like his level of expertise on the dog thing is something that I personally haven't heard before. Me neither. From a guy that trains uh, working dogs. I've never heard anyone break down the whole, not, not the process really, but like the identity of the dog and how it fits in with different mm -hmm. types of environments and shit like that. It was really interesting to hear all that stuff. Yeah, he's, he's a fascinating guy, and this is a, a great interview coming up. Uh, Jamie, uh, why don't you patch this in with uh, Mike Ritlin? Welcome to Drinking Bros Podcast. You've asked for Mike Ritlin, the host of Mike Drop, to be on the show for a while now, and we finally made it happen. It only took the quarantine to get him on the show because, look, you've got nowhere to go, Mike, do you? Well, that's that's pretty true. Uh, but let's be <laughs> honest, I, I don't have anywhere to go most of the time. So, uh, <laughs> But it, work, it works out damn well. I appreciate you having me on. The two of you, <clears throat> you and Dan, uh, both of your looks and demeanors match up almost like you guys are long-lost brothers. There's a lot of us what? running around out there. <laughs> it's basically just the same dude over and over. <laughs> Fucking, uh, yeah, the veteran gray man, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just kind of blending in. It's a stone cold face. Yeah. Stupid shit. It, it's, it's a beard. You don't know how many people you've seen <laughs> killed or have been killed, like by your, by the hands of yourselves. Uh, and then it's just a very flat, uh, voice quality, uh, as if everything is even killed, no matter what's happening around you. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's the uh, it's it's the Dwight Schrute of veterans, right? <laughs> With a beard. Uh, welcome to the show. Hey, congratulations on the success of your podcast, by the way. Well, shit, thank you. It uh, means a lot coming from you guys. You guys have uh, kind of set the bar over the years, honestly. So it uh, it's a uh, select company, and I'm I'm humbled to be in it. So I appreciate it. No, man, it's uh, it's one of those things where that's probably the most asked <laughs> question we get all the time: is how do I create a successful podcast and yeah. monetize it and, and make it available for for people and it, you know first of all it, it takes just getting behind the mic and actually doing it getting interesting guests you've been able to to knock out some some bangers on your show um i watched the the eddie gallagher interview how was that one for you it was great uh you know it'd been a long time coming uh, i didn't know him previously i'd never worked with him and um you know so i i didn't really have you know, any bias of like saying, Hey, you know, this is a buddy of mine or somebody that I did a platoon with or anything like that. Obviously being a team guy, there's a little bit of bias there, but, uh, I tried to be as, a, uh, objective as I could while, <clears throat> while still giving him an opportunity to, to kind of tell his, his side of the story, which he, he largely had not had up until that point, at least from, from what I'd seen. And so, uh, it, it was neat to, to be able to sit down with him and kind of get the, the full scoop from him. And, and I'm glad that I did it. I've, I've gotten, you know, a tremendous amount of feedback, uh, overwhelmingly good. You always have the, you know, the occasional, uh, you know, trolls that want to, uh, cause problems or, or whatever. I mean, they're entitled to their opinion, their opinion, just like the rest of us. But, uh, uh, but yeah, it, it was a neat, neat interview to do. And, uh, I, I feel fortunate to, to have been able to, to get him to sit down with me. Yeah. I just, I figured cause you guys were both Navy SEALs that either you knew each other, um, had served together or, uh, or you guys just have some secret fraternity where you meet at a bar down in, you know, Del Mar or something and get together. Like, yeah. I feel like every Na we Navy SEAL knows one another. <clears throat> Yeah, we'd made out a few times. But, yeah, uh, that's really you know. what it is. That's what it is yeah. right there. So it's not a secret fraternity or anything. By the way, yeah. you can't have too many seals in one room at the same time because they're all so diva. Like the mirrors, there's only so much wall space for mirrors in the walls. <laughs> you know, like you couldn't put Mike and, and Ray Care in the same room. No, no, no not at all. Because Ray would be fucking pulling his dick and balls out, and I don't know what this yeah. asshole would be doing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I might join in the fun. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not above, you know, dropping trial and, and showing the fucking goods. You know, it depends on how many beers I have in me, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Ray cash care came on the show and he was the first one to pull out his dick and balls live on air. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Well, and we were doing a video it? show. It, yeah. it, like it, it exists out in the world. Well, we covered his, yeah. we covered his dick and balls up with a picture of Burt Koontz actually from, uh, yeah. well, you know, Burt. I, it, it was not that big of a picture. Is that safe? No, to assume? <laughs> no we had to scale it uh, down. The picture of Bert. It's a fucking thumbnail of Bert. Yeah, it was. Cover that up. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. man, uh, what's grinding your gears these days, Mike? What do you think about this uh, this upcoming election? We now know it's Biden versus Trump. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, to me, the Jesus Christ. The, I mean, <laughs> Biden fucking scares me, honestly. Uh, but I mean. Most of the candidates on, on the left, uh, I, I find frightening. Most candidates, period, I think, are, are relatively frightening, mm. let's be honest. But, um, you know, I actually, I like the, <coughs> excuse me, um, that Tulsi Gabbard gal, plenty of things that I disagree with her on. Mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of how she conducted herself, uh, I think, you know, if, if all or at least most politicians at least uh, carried themselves, uh, you know, with dignity the way that she does uh, and interacts with people as respectful as she does. Even if she completely disagrees with you, she doesn't go into the, you know, the territory that most of them do where they're just slinging fucking mud and trying to make you look like a total like asshole. Like how the know? Hillary Clinton camp tried to yeah. paint her as a fucking Russian asset. Yeah. 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 Like she is a, first of all, no one in your fucking family has served shit. Yeah. You old bitch. <laughs> like yeah. you, no, nobody in your f entire family has ever provided any service to this country other than to rape and pillage it. And then in yeah. the case of Bill, literally rape. And, so and pillage, yeah. get fucked. <laughs> this woman yeah. serving her country. Like, whatever you think about her politics or her position in your party, you don't fucking yeah. do shit like that, man. That's fucked up. Yeah, it's strange with Tulsi Gabbard um, because she was very <laughs> well-spoken, and uh, I think a lot of people – you know, on the, on the right in particular, like you try to go over worst case scenarios in your head. If someone from the left would win, she was probably the, the one person you'd be like, eh, I could tolerate her. I, I think. Um, but sure. after this, you know, primary ended for her, 
um, the, the, the last one where she dropped out, um, she kind of disappeared, which I thought was odd. And to me, she would be a great VP pick, but I haven't even heard her mentioned. She, might be, she might be active right now. She might be deployed or something. Oh, really? Because of this bullshit. She's a pilot, isn't she? Or some shit like that. I don't yeah. know what she does. She may be, yeah, but, she may well, be doing she, But she's a, she's a congressman or a congressperson, though. You know, so she, I don't think she can be. But uh, yeah. she's, she's you gone know, on recess before she's gone to active for a couple of months at a time, I think. I mean, really? she's, got, she's got to do annual training and shit to stay current in guard. Yeah. So she's got to do something. Hmm. I don't know. That's <clears> crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know either. The, uh, anyway, I guess my point is, you know, she she of the entire field was was the one candidate that I was like, you know, I, I can at least engage with her or I could listen to her talk. I, I would interview her and, and not want to jump across the fucking desk, uh, you know, at, at them tiptoeing around the questions that you ask and things of that nature. But, you know, fast forwarding to, you know, between Bernie and Biden for a little while and then now now Biden, it's just like, you know, for for a party that that screams tolerance and fuck old rich white men and, and, you know, just kind of dovetails into all of their virtue virtue signaling bullshit that they just continually throw out there to have those two guys be your final two. And then ultimately Biden, who's, who's as establishment old rich white guy politician as you can fucking create. Yeah. I mean, a, a fucking algorithm could not create a more stereotypical consummate textbook example of what they claim to hate. And yet now he's their guy and you listen to him talk. And I mean, you honestly, you could, you could eat a bowl of SpaghettiOs and shit more coherent thoughts than this guy says in most of his, his interviews, you know? And, and so, uh, it, it, it baffles me, frankly, that, that that's the guy that, that they want going against Trump. And, and uh, I mean, I just I don't get it. Like, I, I don't know if I'm on a hidden camera show or all of us are. It's, what is the fucking Truman show? Like, I don't know what's going on. But yeah, like, yeah. To have that guy be your representative is, is fucking mind boggling. Yeah, it's, it's what it feels like, because, you know, he can't complete a full sentence in most of these interviews these days. And I'm to the point personally where I, I, I refuse to bash him anymore. Because I feel, yeah, I, feel I, I just feel bad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's like, look, no matter who you voted for, the guy served his country for 47 years um, and, and at least tried to do good at some point in his life. And now he's, it, it appears to be dementia. Dan, you, you have another theory that he's on Adderall? No, I think he do, definitely has dementia. His, I, I think his physical and mental faculties are failing him. But I think if you've seen any of these latest interviews, I think they're pumping him with – Adderall, B12, whatever they can to keep him alert and upright. Because listen to the interview. When someone is, is like stuttering over themselves or babbling or whatever the fuck, there's a couple things are going on. The reason it happens physiologically is because your brain is moving faster than your mouth can move. It's sending signals faster than you can execute that movement, right? Mm -hmm. That's what he's doing. So why is it? Is it part of dementia? I don't know. Maybe that's just a symptom of dementia. But I think... Just based on my experience, that seems like somebody who's cracked the fuck out on Adderall, or Could be. some some other kind of stimulant. Whether yeah. it be you know massive. I mean, he's seventy seven, so a huge dose of B twelve could do that to him as well. But you saw him in that <laughs> one debate, and he sounded like he was lost. Yeah, the whole time. Yeah. Then he did that public address, and it was like, who is this guy? What the fuck's he talking about? And then all of a sudden, for the next debate versus Bernie, he's like on it the whole time. Come on, man, that shit doesn't happen when you're seventy seven. You don't bounce back like that. Yeah, it's crazy. What were you saying, Mike? Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, like, if you watch him even from uh, just a couple of years ago, like, it seems like it, it was like a light switch turned mm -hmm. off in his brain, you know, because even just a couple of years ago, he was a pretty fucking sharp guy, uh, you know, was was a good debater. He's quick on his feet, you know, had had good points. Even even if you disagree with him, the, the guy could fucking argue as, as good as anybody. Uh, you know, and, and now it's, it is, it's like, it's, it's like your grandfather that is in a nursing home that you're, it's like, you know, in Texas, it's the, you know, bless your heart fucking thing. Like you just feel bad for the guy, <laughs> you know, like I just look at him like, God, you poor bastard. Like, and you know, but for Obama to come out and endorse him and just seeing these people, you know, give their, their shells of an endorsement and these, these false uh, you know, in, endorsements that they give them that are, are just towing the fucking company line. I, I just look at it and I'm like, you guys are the biggest group of fucking shithead hypocrites that I've ever seen in my life, con considering how much soapbox campaigning, you know, that they do against stuff like that. Uh, and now they're they're doing exactly what they espouse to hate so fucking bad. You well, know? That's what uh, that's what human beings do, though. 
honestly. Like that this, doesn't make it right. Every, every, no, it doesn't make it right, but everybody is just a fucking... I think we're all kind of hypocritical in a way. And nobody... Like, if we, if we just talked about it and admitted it, that conversation alone usually solves the hypocrisy. Like, you have to expose it, right? But everybody on their side especially is just like in this echo chamber. Where... But to me, the, yeah, I mean, to me, the, the difference between shit bags and people that aren't shit bags is just, you know, coming fucking clean, right? Yeah. Is, is just saying, yeah, you know what? I fucked up. Or, yeah, I could have handled that better. Not, no, it's that guy's fault. No, that wasn't us that did that. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, to me, that, that's really the only difference. Like, everybody fucks up, yeah. you know, and, there, and there's people that, that either admit to doing it and say, yeah, you know what? Uh, I fucked that up. That's my bad. I'll do my best to, to not have that happen again. Like, when was the last time you heard a, a politician give a speech like that? Like, yeah, you know what? I could have made a better fucking decision than I did. Yeah, I right. didn't. I wouldn't I'm count human. on ever hearing that. Yeah, you know, but but the re- I mean, you know, to say that that we're all that fucked up, I I disagree. I mean, I think you know, there's a lot of people that that I mean, I have this conversation with my own kids on a regular basis. Like, yeah, you know what? I, I hold you guys to a standard. I hold myself to the same standard. When I fuck up, I own it. I'm telling you, I fucked that up. You know, it doesn't mean that 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 I'm perfect, or it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen again. Uh, you know, but I, to me, it's it's important to do that because when you don't, then then you create, uh, you know just animosity and, and, uh, you know, just dissent, uh, amongst the ranks. And, and I think it's, it's fucking dangerous. Yeah, it is. And that shit all sits under the surface. Uh, I guess what I meant by that is that we all have a proclivity to do that stuff. It, the, and I agree with you. What separates good people from bad people is just the ability or not even the ability, the will to just say that I was wrong. It's not, I, I don't get it honestly. in some of the stuff, like most of the stuff you do in life, if you fail, more than you succeed, then you're considered a failure, right? Yeah. I guess. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, how you have to fail quite a bit for that to be the case. And in sports, you have to fail a lot, like most of the time, especially like in baseball. But Most of life is about failures, though. Uh, no a, matter what a, you're doing, if you're, if you're starting a company, chances yeah. are it's <clears throat> not the first one that's going to make you No, rich. no. Like, uh, for example, in California, there's 150,000 new LLCs started every single year, mm-hmm. and 95% of them fail within the first year. Yep. Especially it's, in California, Christ. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, uh, you have to file an LLC just to beat the California taxes. Yeah, you know? it's, yeah. it's almost mandatory yeah. these days. Out yeah, there. but yeah. it's it's like the I I agree with you. I think that stuff kind of sits <clears throat> under the surface like that. It, it's it's like being in a room with two people who know that each other knows the secret, but neither one of them are willing to say it out loud or admit it because that changes yeah. the dynamic or whatever the fuck. That's cowardice to me. I don't I don't I don't buy that. Like, just say whatever yeah. the fuck is happening, and then that's the only way you can identify and deal with it. CNN, yeah. for example, mm-hmm. on Wednesday, today's Friday, right? Correct. Yeah, on Wednesday, they some what's this guy's name? Michael D'Antonio uh, wrote this story about, he, they're trying to shit talk Trump about the fucking stimulus checks. Uh-huh. And they were like, all he's doing is giving you back your own money. I'm like, whoa, did I hear a liberal just refer to tax collection is our own money <laughs> like all of a sudden you fucking change your fucking story and narrative that you've been pushing for 40 fucking years to make one point about this one guy yeah that's hypocrisy right oh absolutely and you know it's going to continue it's only going to get worse with all of it so i just expect I, like i expect the worst every single day and then i move on with my life mm-hmm. um yeah. the, the one thing that i am looking forward to though is the election and it's simply just to vote so I can see those the screaming memes and all that shit all over again. Like I just want to see the life sucked out of everyone for another four years. There's Twitter. no chance while there's a fucking uh, a nationwide, even a global, like pandemic going on that we're gonna change presidents. Do you know how rare it is, like during uh, outbreaks or war, for the presidency to change? Never happens. It's it's never happened no. in American history, not once. So I don't know what the fuck these people think they're doing. But it's just not yeah, going to work. The only thing that uh, that concerns me, I guess, is just with things being as as technologically connected and advanced or driven that they are now, is you know how how hard would it be to to cheat that? I mean, between the voter ID bullshit and mail in ballots, and you know they're talking about doing online stuff. Like, I mean, to me that that's a good way to fucking win an election is to just manipulate it to the point where where they're they've got their thumb on the fucking le- lever anyway. <laughs> Uh, that shit worries me, frankly. But. Yeah, I mean, just from a technological standpoint, that would be really, really hard to do. Like, you would have to have a massive operation to do something well, like agreed. that. Well, agreed. 
Agreed. I guess I just look at it with, you know, them talking about, you know, everything being so serious, which that's a whole nother fucking topic, but to, you know, to, to where they're going to shut down polling locations oh, yeah, and do yeah. all mail in ballots. Like, you know, th that's how you would do it. Yeah. You know, yeah. say, Oh, you know, for the safety of you guys, we're going to shut every fucking state down their polling and you just go ahead and mail it in and we'll count it. You know I mean? That, that's a good way to steal a fucking election given what's going on. Yeah. And look, the, I mean, you wouldn't really have to, I guess, I, I guess I'm technically wrong about that. You wouldn't have to have a huge operation because you would only have to target a couple of precincts. So the yeah. Cambridge Analytica, mm -hmm. the, the brill, and I've talked about this on the show before. The brilliance of that is they didn't do a, a broad campaign targeting everybody. They figured out what the most susceptible precincts were in swing states. Yep. And that targeted would, that them. Yeah. them. They only targeted them. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, if you, if you could hack or, or crack or, or whatever the fuck you want to call it, just those locations, you could probably cause some, some problems. Yeah, yeah I don't, for sure. I, I, mean, I don't think it'll come to that, though. I, I don't think, you know, Trump has already spoken out about it. So have most of the Republicans saying, hey, with the country reopening, uh, I don't think they're going to let that happen. And we just saw what happened in the case of Wisconsin with the primary where, you know, the Supreme Court overruled it and said, no, you're going to go to the fucking polls and vote. I just I don't see it happening. But I think it's a great talking point for Dems right now. Um, yeah. But uh, me personally, I don't think it's going to happen. However, you know, you read stories like today. Are you in Texas, by the way? I am. I'm right, right outside of Dallas. So I just I, I it just flashed across my computer here that Texas closed down all of its schools for the year. Um, yeah, the governor just made that recommendation here a couple hours ago. Um, is that official? It's supposed to be. I mean, I guess, you know, I don't know how from a directive standpoint, like I don't know how uh, in lockstep every independent school district is with the governor's recommendations. I don't know if he has the executive authority to actually make it so that they have to do it or if they have the autonomy to say, no, you know, we're, we are going back. Having said that, I, I, I don't anticipate there even being pushback. I mean, because at this point you're only talking about a few weeks to a month at the most anyway, mm -hmm. that, that that kids would have gone back uh, to begin with. So uh, my, my assumption is that, that that will be official final and, and the school year for 2020 is, is done in, in the state of Texas. But, yeah. I mean, the other part of that is if, if the governor gives a, a shutdown recommendation, you stay open and then people get <laughs> sick, you're going to be sued. Yeah. Your ass. For that shit, yeah. So. yeah. Well, the reason I ask is if they extended that through the fall, right. And let's say all the governors did. And they, if they extended schools being closed for the fall, first of all, a lot of voting goes on in schools. Second of all, they could use that to say, this is why we should mail in. If it's not safe for our children to go out, why are we even going out to the polls and let's do mail-in votes? The, the yeah. schools being shut down in, in this fall would be a massive, massive push to get people to vote uh, by mail-in because then you would be able to say, look, it's not safe enough for our children. Let's all mail in our votes. Yeah, agreed. I, I don't see that happen. I mean, to me, I, I think the, the 2021 school year starting in, you know, late August for most, uh, most school districts, I, I think will go ahead as planned. And I think, I think by then 90% of the country will be, you know, back to some sort of normal anyway. Uh, I, I could be wrong. That's just my, my prediction. Is I have I a think. question. Yeah. What makes mail-in ballots more susceptible to voter fraud than in-person voting? Uh, you, you could tick off any box you want and mail it in, and nobody's going to validate who you are. So when I, I went to go vote in this last— But uh, it's registered mail. Like, it gets—you you, don't—you get sent your uh, ballot, and you still have to go and hand it to somebody or mail it to somebody. But you have to—like, only people who are registered to vote get them. It's not like they create new human—it's not like you can go—you can download off the internet. Download one no, off but the internet. So, so when they yeah, send so it out to you, it's your name, your social, everything, with a barcode that corresponds to your personal ID. Right. So where, where they've run into problems in the past is uh, it, it's who's gathering those, right? The, yes. the, the collection centers that mm -hmm. are saying, okay, you know, who is counting them, mm -hmm. you know, and, and there have been instances very recently and in, in multiple uh, instances, anywhere from, you know, low level local uh, elections all the way up to uh, the 2016 presidential election where, you know, different groups, if, if the majority is, you know, democratic, you know, et, et cetera, where, where they're manipulating those results by just not counting or losing or throwing away votes that they don't want counted. I mean, some precincts with 100%, uh, you know, uh, voter registration geared towards a certain candidate, like that's basically impossible, uh, you know, but there's, there's certain Yeah, but you should be able to audit that, that really that. easy though, right? Like if you, 
it, it should be it should be I, I a very think. simple <laughs> it should be a very simple algorithm to run on uh, our query to run on a data set just from a technological standpoint that says or that, that reads a couple of things one how many people were registered to vote mm -hmm. how many people voted in that precinct yeah, and, and there's precincts all over the all over the country where there's more people voting than are even registered there. You yes. know, and, and even without an algorithm that like that's face value, very black and white, right in front of your face, and and nobody's done shit about it as as far as I've ever seen. Well, those numbers you are know, a little so. bit distorted in places that have same day voter registration. It fucks everything up. I don't think that should be a thing. Like you've got you we've known for four years that this election in November is coming up. You've had plenty of time. Mm. Like you can't I, that that whole same day registration thing. I'm not a fan of. Yeah, the, they the do other, it in Wisconsin. It's not great. The other part to this, Mike, is uh, I, I bought a house um, in, right before the 2016 election. Uh, man and wife were each. I guess they'd requested mail in ballots. Well, they came to my house. Mm. There were there's nothing to have stopped me from just checking the boxes and then mailing those back in. Yeah, but that's a that's a rare occurrence for something like that to happen. Is it? Yes. Uh, why even leave it to chance? Is my is my thing. Um, that's a good question. I mean, look, we, we do so much digitally now. There's so many, like, look at the banks. There's a million different ways to verify your identity. Mm -hmm. But here, they don't, they don't even check your ID to vote. No, so. that's because it's never been done in a real way. Yeah. Like, we've never cared that much about voter ID. And the reason, because in person, for as, as far as in-person voting goes, voter fraud is, is very, very rare. Because, it's, one, it's really hard to do in mass. Now, back in the 50s, it was not rare. 60s, still not rare. 80s, less rare. Like in the last 30 years, we haven't seen that much. At least for uh, in-person in voting. Yeah, I mean, where, where most voter fraud takes place, at least from, from my perspective or from how I understand it, is from mail-in. Yeah. Uh, you know, so... You know, well, I mean, me it would that, be like, easy, like you said, for, like, you, let's say you're in uh, Wisconsin, right? You're doing a statewide Senate election, and... You count all the ballots from Milwaukee and the surrounding areas, the urban areas, mm -hmm. like the big city where most liberals live, and then you lose ballots from other places. Yeah, yeah you could absolutely do something like that. Yeah. Well, I, mean, to, I mean, to me, take a look at the <clears throat> DNC in 2016. I mean, they railroaded one of their own fucking candidates. You know, I mean, so to me, like, if, if they're willing to do that, and I'm not saying that the right is, uh, you know, com completely above doing something like this uh you know I, I think both both parties have their issues but um you know but the left has been caught on more than one occasion doing exactly mm -hmm. what we're talking about you know at, at every fucking level you know so to me it, it's not that it's just possible it's not even that it's probable it's happened you know and, and it will continue to happen now to me the big question is is how big of an impact does that have you know well it depends on how calculated it is as you mentioned you mean you you could interview any campaign manager and they're doing exactly what you're talking about in terms of looking at the entire map county by county saying which counties do yeah, we yeah. need you know and, and then those are the ones they're targeting well you, you can use that same approach to target for for cheating as well it's just mm -hmm. how big of an impact can that swing an entire election you know to me like your your other point is is why why risk it to chance i mean to me it shouldn't be that difficult to develop a system that makes it, you know, largely impossible or, or incredibly difficult at a minimum, uh, you know, mm -hmm. to be able to, to swing an election or steal it or, or whatever. But. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think uh, <coughs> doing it digitally with the kind of security that banks use would be even more secure than in person. Because if you, you can make a fake ID and those dumb dumbs working, not that you're actually dumb people, but volunteers at polling places, yeah. they're not, like even when you walk into a bank, what do you do, really? If you have a pen number and an ID that looks kind of like the motherfucker, yeah. then the, these $12 an hour bank employees are just going to take it and you can fucking steal all this person's money, right? Yeah. But yeah. digitally speaking, it is very difficult to I mean, go through a bank but, and commit like crimes against banks, specifically, unless you're hacking them. That's one thing. But if you're like trying to impersonate somebody or something over the phone or over the internet, that is very difficult to do these days. You, you may be able to do something as simple as a fucking each person is issued a QR code or something like that mm -hmm. to vote. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, again, that's not my fucking wheelhouse, but it seems yeah. like you could do something fairly simple like that, uh, you know, that, that would largely stamp out or at least mostly stifle, you know, some some opportunity to yeah. do something. But like is there I don't think there's any will to do that because both, like you said, both sides of the political spectrum are playing the same game. Mm hmm. 
And that's why nobody wants to fess up like, hey, this, this is a problem. We should probably deal with it. And that's why people that's why the establishment on both sides hated Trump so much back in 2016, because they're all they've all been doing the same shit that he does on a daily basis for fucking years. Yeah. And he yeah. just says it out loud while he's doing it. And they're, they're offended by that. Right. Right. It's like it's like some kind of like it's like they're like you're, like they're British or something. And they're like, oh, you can't talk about pooping in here. We don't poop. Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, no, you're all shit bad. It's like a, it's like a used car salesman going yes. on a national campaign and disclosing all of the shit bag secrets yeah. that they use to fuck you yeah. over. And or, or, and all of the other salesmen are like, hey, dick face, you're yeah. fucking it up for the rest of us. Yeah, Trump is basically a magician that's re- uh, revealing all the secrets of magic. Yeah. And people yeah. are butthurt about it. Well, you can talk to the economy about that. Fuck exactly. This. Exactly. Is there, a, is there a world where you see Biden winning with a superior VP pick? No, I mean, in my opinion, no. I mean, because to me, I don't care who the VP is. <laughs> At the end of the day, like, it's a head-to-head race between Trump and him, you know. So, um, you know, to me, you you risk or put way too much at chance if, if I'm being consulted on behalf of the Democrats, which obviously I'm not. Uh, but to me, you leave way too much to chance uh, by putting, I mean, you could put fucking Obama as his VP, and I don't think it would matter. Uh, you know, I, I really don't. Uh, it, it's funny that you say that because a lot of people are speculating if Michelle was nominated as VP that he he could win. That would push him over the top. But you're saying yeah, even Obama himself would not win this election with it, him. It, I mean, in my opinion, no. I mean, that's just that's how I, I view it. But to me, because, again, ultimately, like it's it's not. I mean, there's one debate between VP candidates. All the rest of the fucking attention is focused on Biden. And you can only step on your dick on national TV so many times before everybody's like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? <laughs> you know, um, and, and Trump, Trump, let's be honest, like between what he has and is willing to invest social media and ad campaign wise in conjunction with the RNC's budget to try to get him reelected like they already have so much fucking material to shove down everybody's throat that makes him look like a a blathering fucking moron uh, enough to the point where I mean they could they could inundate the entire country with it and and again like those aren't edited clips you know they're not taken out of context like it's just him stepping on his dick over and over and over you know and 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 it's happening nonstop. you know so I just don't see it uh, being enough of a benefit no matter who who takes that VP spot yeah. Uh, speaking of TV, you had maybe the greatest television moment of, of 2019. Um, we want to commend you, sir. I think we made him Drinking Bro of the Week. Yeah. Um, we, I don't know right? if you know this or not, but we made you Drinking Bro of the Week. When you went on Fox News and just managed to slip in Epstein didn't kill himself, uh, how crazy was that? Because that clip went viral Im- immediately, yeah. it felt like. It was really crazy. Uh, it wasn't something that I had planned. Uh, the, the little PSA on, you know, hey, if you're with all of the attention from this Baghdadi raid on on Malinois and these types of dogs <clears throat> and, and, and what it's creating in terms of interest of people that shouldn't have them, um, you know, I, I did feel it ne- uh, necessary or, or I felt a little responsible to to put uh, something in, in the airwaves as far as that goes. But the uh, the Epstein thing, honestly, was was as a result of me just being a little bit frustrated with Jesse Waters because I'd done several other national interviews uh, on a few different networks uh, throughout the week in response to that raid and the attention that the dog had gotten. And uh, of all of the people I kind of expected or or hoped that he would take the the interview kind of in the deepest water in terms of you know, past just the, what kind of breeds are used and how do they train them? And, you know, just the basic generic fucking five questions that everybody asks you. Um, and, and he did the opposite. I mean, I, I, like to me, I got the impression that he was just kind of scoffing at it and it was like, oh, you know, the dog guy or whatever, like just almost <laughs> thinking it's like a fucking joke and it just pissed me off, frankly. So, uh, at the end of it, uh, the one thing I will say, it was a pre-recorded segment, right? We recorded on a Friday afternoon and then aired Saturday night. So I, I didn't think that they would keep it in anyway. Uh, you know, so That's I really hilarious. just, said, I figured it was live. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, no, it wasn't. So you know, hats off to Fox for, for actually airing it and not uh, not cutting it out. But, uh, you know, he, he thought it was funny. I mean, he, he actually got on the uh, on the earpiece after the segment was over. He's like, hey, you know, stick around for a second. I want to talk to you or whatever. And he's like, do you know something I don't? Like, what the fuck was that all about? And uh, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I, I know I got all the secrets. You know, I, I might let you in. I was like, no, I don't fucking know anything. I was like, I'm just busting your balls. 
<laughs> he's like, oh, well, you know, if you find out anything, be sure to let us know. I'm like, yeah, you'll be the first guy. Yeah, I'm yeah. definitely <laughs> calling Fox News right after I find out a piece of classified material that literally yeah. just got someone murdered. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Going yeah. straight to the press with that one. <laughs> yeah. But but then after that, you know, I'm not shitting you, like nine seconds after that piece aired, my phone just ex- was exploding for like the next two weeks. We had people, you know, getting in touch with me that I hadn't talked to in 20 fucking years. And, uh, you know, are you guys busting out White Claws right now? Oh, yeah. I, I, Come I, on, <laughs> brother. It's quarantine. I'm a couple deep so uh, far, my man. Great. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's damn near three o'clock. Um, I didn't realize you guys had blonde hair and big tits. That's fucking awesome. I do, actually. <laughs> big old yeah. titties. Yeah, huge. Yeah. We're, uh, we're, we're trying to buck the trend and make seltzers uh, great again. Here's cool the thing. Again, you man. hit your 30s like this, uh, you yeah. know, your late 30s. You can't, you can't just keep pounding bud heavies all goddamn day. It's, well, not with that attitude, you can't. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't care about the calories. I'm just. This is a yeah. very lazy drink for me. I mean, it's tech, yeah. it's it's vodka. It's easy. And yeah. It's, if you think about just math wise, vodka is forty percent alcohol, right? It is eighty proof. Mm-hmm. And then you cut. What's a normal vodka drink? It's four parts to one, right? Yeah. So it's twenty five percent of forty percent. What is that? What's one fifth or one fourth? Of uh, 40%? 10%, 10%, right? Yeah. So this is like half of a vodka soda, Yeah, essentially. You're keeping it classy for the drive home. Yeah. I don't it's, like like, it's like Zima 2.0, right? It is, yeah. You guys remember? <laughs> oh, do I remember? I wrote a rap song about it that went viral, Zimas is and Jollies. Right? Yeah. No shit. Big, God big damn. fan. Big, big fan Speaking of that. Speaking of man. Zima, you, did you see that uh, uh, Florida is starting to open up some of their beaches this week? Tonight. Well, it, with, within the hour, yeah. Tonight, right, oh, right really? now. It's today. Doing. Yeah. I know, and I know yeah. exactly where that is. It's about an hour north of my parents, and I can tell you there's going to be beaches people are, are going to get wet on that beach tonight. When you say wet, what liquored up and then fucked afterwards, um, <laughs> because the weather's nice. We're on the east coast. We're in North Carolina right now. We, we're <laughs> yeah. in Wilmington. We have a beach here. It is <laughs> gorgeous today. I think with the quarantine, especially when it ends and when little segments start to open. You will see more people than expected. They will go bug fuck, and there's going to be a lot of children in nine months from now. Um, hey, fucking rock and roll. Well, yeah. Jacksonville is basically like Southern Georgia. Mm-hmm. That's one of the, Jacksonville. No offense, any any Jacksonvilleans <laughs> out there, but that is one of the <laughs> most white trash places on the face of the Indeed earth. Indeed, it is Jacksonville. Yeah. Oh yeah, like it's not. It, it may be the one. I don't. I don't want to go against certain parts of West Virginia though. Yeah, their quarterback has one of the best mustaches of all time. Who, Gardner Minshew? Yeah. He might not be their quarterback. No, they went all in on him this year. Nope. So, yeah. They just signed someone else. I, I heard or no, they were, they're trying to sign Cam Newton, yeah. Well, the, the running back, Fournette, wants them to sign him. But yeah. I, I think it's Minshew's team. He's got a, he's got a mustache. You can, <clears> I can guarantee you he's probably going down on a stranger tonight on that beach. Yeah. Well, with a dick broom like that, how can you blame him? No, yeah. you I mean, can't. No, epic. Yeah. He's a... Uh, he twenty one touchdowns, six interceptions, ninety one QBR. Yeah, court or rating, not QBR. His sex appeal rating though is a is an even one hundred. Well, he I wears mean. cut off jean shorts. I mean, you can't argue with a guy like that. Look, if you're he was, I don't know where he's from originally. I don't think it's Florida, but he really leaned into Florida, didn't he? Yeah, oh yeah, he is Florida. Yeah, he immediately but, I mean, got he came a from fucking Pacific Northwest. I mean, that's that is he's that where he's from? Fort Washington. Well, yeah, I know he was know. playing at Washington State, but uh, no, he's actually from uh, uh, Mississippi. They call him the Mississippi Mudstash. Oh yeah, yeah, mustache, he's from yeah. Mississippi. That's that's not. I mean, he immediately upon arriving in Florida, he got a bunch of Tommy Bahama shirts. You have and to cut off blue jean shorts. Necessary. All. How have you necessary. guys not had him on your show yet? I mean, he fits right the fuck in. Yeah, you know, it's funny. So when right around when he was blowing up, uh, we we reached out to him and Barstool got him right before we did. So yeah. it kind of it kind of knocked the wind out of our sails, and we were going to get him on in this off season, but with the pandemic and everything else that's going on. It's yeah. it's it's one of those things where it's it's hard to get a hold of people, and uh, you know everybody's talking through a a weird blurry phone, um, even people that you you wouldn't expect like celebrities, I, like on the yeah. Today Show, Al Roker and them have an amazing feed from home, you know wherever they are. Clearly they're not social distancing with you know six feet, but the guests look like, I mean they're. I, I don't know in, in a 3g state with a, a phone it's all blurry and you're like bro you're you're the rock right now how am i looking yeah. at you through a, a foggy lens yeah. and it's amazing yeah. what happens when you take away the dps and the camera and the makeup and the lighting from hollywood yeah. celebrities because they they, they are just like, like the rest of us yeah 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 so yeah. 
Um, you know, when you watch them and, and things like that, you're like, all right, sweet. And then, you know, for certain people like Minshew, I want that motherfucker here. Yeah, he's. Uh, yeah. I, I like his personality a lot. Yeah, I want. I want him in. I want him in studio. You know. Yeah. With Mike, you're a dirtbag like us. So it's like, all right, great. I, I wouldn't want me in there. Let's no, you're honest. not. I, I, if I had to gamble right now, we have a gambling sponsor, mybookie.com. If I had to gamble, I would say you're probably not wearing pants at all right now, right? I am for sure. Just I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to. I'm not going to Ray carry you right now and show you the fucking wedding tackle. I'm not going to do it. Are you what friends I will with Ray? Say, Oh yeah, yeah. He's. Uh, I was just. I was actually just on their show. Uh, it hasn't aired yet, but uh, him and Jason. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I've known Jason for a few years. We've mm-hmm. done some co uh, co uh, foundation stuff through uh, through the Sturgis event every year. So oh, I've, cool, yeah. I've known him for a few for a few years. Have you but, have uh, you run into any of uh, Black Rifles people up there at the Sturgis thing? Not at certain. Well, I take that back. Uh, not they, any of like the actual leadership. I mean, they have uh, a booth there every year, or at least the last couple of years they yeah. have. But it's just you know, it's a handful of. Uh, of folks just kind of running shit for him. Yeah, I don't think know, anybody from the leadership went after 2017. I think that was the last yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this. about when, when it comes to the dogs and the canine dogs, you know, mm. and that you work with in particular, what are the five worst questions you hate to hear that you always get? I'm always curious because my, my neighbor <laughs> next door, he, he runs the canine unit here at, uh, in Wilmington. Um, and I'm curious your answer on this. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're kind of always the same. I mean, it's, it's not so much that I hate to get them as much as it's just, it's really predictable, right? Which is, you know, how hard do they bite? Uh, do metal teeth make them bite any fucking harder? How do you get them to jump out of airplanes? Uh, males or females, which one do you use or prefer? Why do you pick the, the breeds that you pick? You know, they're, they're understandably generic and, and it's understandable why that's most people's questions, but, um, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of the same five or six questions that almost everybody asks. Uh, you know, the teeth do not impact the dog's ability to bite. They, uh, they make it the same or they, they get them for the same reasons that we do is that, you know, the the only reason a dog is typically going to have metal teeth is because he's chipped or cracked one of them and it's there to protect it. It it does not enhance their ability to bite one fucking bit. Uh, in fact, I mean, for, for me, I, I would, not that I want to get bit by either one, but to me, a, a dog without any caps, uh, if his teeth are intact, I mean, they're, they're going to be stronger and, and oh, yeah. shittier to deal with than sure. the metal ones. So, yeah, I mean, just uh, uh, compressed calcium like that is way <laughs> harder than steel, or not steel, with the metal they use to fill teeth with. Yeah, yeah but, just, but also like it's, it's a malleable the, alloy. But, yeah, it's like the anyway, the foot pound uh, of pressure in the jaw is way more important than any of that. Bullshit. But everybody saw yeah. James Bond. Like we know the guy with the metal teeth, obviously, and yeah. that's you know, yeah, it's very a similar. One. That's a retarded question. Who, if anybody out there that asks you that question, that's real dumb. No, uh, I mean, that's, uh, honestly, I mean, that's one of the most common questions. Uh, uh, <laughs> jump, jumping out of airplanes, too. Uh, you know, which the, the jumping out of airplanes thing again is is uh, understandable. But the way that dogs are trained to to deal with any stimulus is just an exposure thing. But but where I think humans where they have the most trouble uh, in terms of relating to dogs and, and just in asking that question highlights uh, human beings inability to project and put themselves in the dog shoes mm-hmm. is that you know, we have the ability to rationalize that you're in a fucking airplane, right? That it's at 30,000 feet or, or maybe it's 12, I mean, whatever, but, um, but that you're, you're way the fuck above earth, you're hauling ass and it's, you know, you're looking out the window, like, holy shit, a dog has absolutely no fucking concept of that. You know, to them it's loud and it's fucking windy. And that's, mm-hmm. that's really about it. You know, there is a, a little bit of a weightlessness, the same way that you see if a dog that's never been in an elevator and it goes down fast, uh, you know, kind of like mm-hmm. somebody's mom and it goes down quick and, and you see the dog fucking, you know, get a little squirrely or whatever. Mm-hmm. You may, you may see a little bit of that the first uh, few times, you know, once, twice, whatever, but you know, the dog is going to be strapped to the handler's chest muzzled typically. And they're just jumping out with the dog. Anyway, if a dog has good environmental nerves and, and a sound stable temperament, uh, you're generally not going to see a, a, a whole whole lot of behavioral change from that dog to begin with. But dog in an elevator, I think, is a song by uh, Aerosmith. It is, yeah, yeah, B- very popular. Yeah. Hits. Uh dance. That was my first song at, the, at my wedding with my wife. Dog in an elevator. Yeah, dog in an elevator. We're gigantic fans. What's a, what's a, what's one of the, the the questions that no one asks? That you're like, hey man, you'd be really surprised that these dogs do X. Um. It's mm, a good question. I mean, I don't know that anybody's ever surprised me with one, I guess. Um, Until today. 
Yeah. Welcome I mean, to White Claw. <laughs> yeah, that's the fucking booze talking. Probably like from a genetic standpoint, um, you know, like I think people just assume. I guess that this this would would be the one that that maybe doesn't get asked that uh, that should or I wish people did, which is is how big of a role genetics play. Uh, there seems to be, you know, pe- people tend to be completely lost on the fact that just because a dog is a Malinois, a German shepherd, a Dutch shepherd, that automatically it can be trained Mm -hmm. to do do X, you know, and X specifically being police work, protection work, going and biting people and and what have you. Uh, And the analogy I like to use is really, it's it's no different than say a security guard, a police officer, a a fucking soldier, is that if, if one of the tests is I'm going to put that, that individual in a fucking Applebee's, right. And he's eating his dinner and it's busy. And and one of us walks in there. He doesn't know, know us from anybody. And we walk up, eyeball him and just slap the fuck out of him while he's sitting there and and knock his food off and push him and try to pick a fight with him. There are plenty of fucking males in this country that that wouldn't do a a goddamn thing Mm -hmm. about that. Right now, if you take that person, right. And, and is there any amount of training that you could put into that individual that would make you be comfortable with serving a high risk warrant or deploying with them or hiring them to guard your family at night uh, from a threat? Fuck no, there isn't, you know, that, that guy just does not have what it takes to do that kind of work. And so with dogs, it's unfortunately the exact same thing. Uh, and, and that trait genetically is incredibly elusive the same way it is in, in people. And, it, right. and it's not, it shouldn't be that lost on anybody once you think of it in in terms of, you know, that, that individual trait, that 1% of, you know, running towards danger and and having no real regard for your own personal safety when it comes to situations like that, you know, that, that individual trait specifically does not lend itself to the survivability of the species, which is the number one priority of any species collectively. So uh, it's, it's an incredibly elusive trait. Most dogs, just like Mm -hmm. most humans don't possess it, even in those breeds, the percentage is higher, Mm -hmm. uh, but it's still extraordinarily low. Even when you're breeding, for it and so uh, the biggest misconception people have is that you know i can send you my fucking labradoodle and you can turn him into fucking mike tyson like you can't uh you know if, if it doesn't have have the genetic tools to do that kind of work which again I, I can't stress enough most of them don't fucking have that uh you're 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 shit out of luck I mean, no different funny. than Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Finish that. Up. Well, no, no different than, you know, the parents that have the, the nine-year-old that they think is going to be the next fucking Peyton Manning that oh, yeah. every coach is oh, like, yeah. no, you know, like your kid just <laughs> does, doesn't have the right shit for that. You know? what, what if somebody sent you a labradoodle and said, I want this to be Mike Tyson when he gets back and you send it back with a lisp and a face tattoo? <laughs> well, jo- joke's on them then, I guess. Uh, is that not what you meant? Like how that's close what you meant. was I supposed to get? Does how, he have, how close was I supposed to get Does he have to, to spend three years in jail for rape, or is it just like, what, what are we talking are we, about here? Are we good uh, with the face tattoo? What I would yeah. personally like to see happen is, is for you guys to start training wiener dogs. Um, just yeah, well, because of the hilariousness of it, and then to see a wiener dog full sprint, attack a man, bring him to yeah. the ground, and then chew the shit out of him like... It would make you not want to call off the dog because it's, yeah. it, it, it would if, be a If comedy. that was possible, if that was possible, I would do it. Again, I, you know, I can count on one hand the amount of dogs outside of the traditional working breeds that had uh, the different characteristics that, that you're looking for for that. And, and that's really what it is, is that that, that heart, I'll, I will call it heart, is that you know, for that dog, I mean, that's one of my benchmark tests, as are most uh, individuals in this industry, is that they're going to push the dog, they're going to pick a fight with them. And that dog, you, know, you come to a, a shit or get off the pot moment, moment where the dog either wants to fucking kill you or he wants nothing to do with it. You know, and, and that that is the defining moment in your selection process in a dog for the apprehension work is that if that dog has no fucking desire to confront you when you're using body language and predatorial nonverbal communication skills to ensure that that dog understands that you're here to be the fucking grim reaper and, and crush his goddamn soul you know, there's nothing you can do with it. If that dog is, is like, you know what, fuck this, I'm out of here. You know, uh, right. again, just like with people, you, you can't, you can't put that into them. I, I wish you could, uh, you just can't. Yeah. You can't unbitch somebody. What would you say the, uh, attrition rate is for your dogs or people that came, not dogs, but are people, but dogs that come through your process? Well, it, it's low because my selection process is high, you know? So to me, I, you know, if you look at say buds, as an example, is mm-hmm. that the attrition rate going through buds is, you know, 75 to 85%. You know, I, I would say in finding the right dogs, the ones that I test and select, it's at least that high. The ones that, that actually pass my test, 
you know, once they've passed the test and they've, they've kind of shown me everything that I need to see to do the work, then it's pretty low. Uh, you know, and, and that's why my test is so anal retentive and stringent is so that, that I don't have to waste my fucking time the same way, you know, any special operations or, or high level law enforcement selection course is the way that it is. And the attrition rate is so mm-hmm. high is so that when you do get that, that crop of individuals that, that pass that, then you're not wasting your fucking time with them. And, and overwhelmingly, most of them are going to be what, uh, what you need to do the work. Right. O- odd question for you. How do they name the dogs? That's a, you know, sometimes I wonder who the fuck came up with the name of this dog. Yeah. Uh, they should use a rap name generator like Post Malone yeah, did yeah. to come up with Post Malone. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what I felt yeah. like with Conan. So obviously yeah. Conan was, you know, at the white house and she got worldwide acclaim which yeah. is why all those people were like oh i want to buy that dog it's but gonna Conan's be amazing a female right it, it is a female yeah. and the, a even weird... the white house got it wrong yeah um the white house got it wrong initially and they said it was a male and it's a female and i was like who comes up with the names of the dogs is it you guys is it uh the original yeah, well, owners yeah g- generally it's an original owner most of them are coming from overseas um there seems to be a, a strange affinity with 80s rock uh pop rock figures like falco and you know like there's just i love uh, falco rock me amadeus was his hit song yeah yeah one of my favorite dogs that i had years ago was named falco but uh there's there you know falco aris arco carlos uh rico reno like a a lot of names two syllable names that end in an o uh you know are are fairly popular but uh you know there's a fair bit of the the greek mythology names that, that go in there sometimes handlers may change the names um but you know, usually it's it's from the originator. Uh, right. You yeah. know, and they, is, they have a little bit different idea than, than Americans typically. Is there anything about uh, a like a a two syllable name for a dog that's working? Because I like I have friends that train hunting dogs, and they prefer a two syllable name because of the cadence of the commands you give and shit like that. Is there anything to that? Yeah, I think maybe even a little subconsciously, yes. Um, I, I think it, it's easier to interject that into giving a dog commands and, and interacting and working with the dog mm. for it to be two syllables. Yeah. I think it's just easier. I mean, if you've got a nine syllable word, right. That, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's just inefficient, you know? So uh, <laughs> on the same, on the same token, I think, um, you know, one syllable sounds more like a command, you know, yeah, most, yeah. most commands are one syllables or, or you want to, that's what them, I was told you know, actually that to differentiate between a command and addressing them directly. They use two syllables because it's the shortest one where you can make that difference difference. Yeah. I, I think it, you know, for the dog, I don't know that it makes a huge difference. Yeah. Uh, they're going to make an association irrespective of, of how many syllables it is. I, yeah. I think it's a little, maybe a little easier for the, for the handler and owner to, to keep straight, even if they don't even realize that's what they're doing. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, that, that tends to kind of be, be the case, I think. Mm. <coughs> well, I mean, that's not, that's, onomatopoeia. that's not too different than, uh, can you spell that word? No, but if you named a dog onomatopoeia, I don't think they would, it would take them a while to react and attack. Probably, yeah. Yeah, onomatopoeia, onomatopoeia. I mean, we abbreviate names anyways. Anytime they're longer than two syllables, we almost always abbreviate the name. Yeah, yeah, o- over tell, here. Tell A-Rod. me a three-syllable name that you fucking don't abbreviate. Mary Lou Retton. I just don't. MLR. <laughs> That's what people today would just put MLR, and they would, you would like, who's that? It's fucking Mary Lou Retton, bitch. No, you're right, you're and right. Somebody, there would be an internet argument about the abbreviation as well because that's where we live in 2020 so it's like yeah i mean yeah. technically mlr is still three fucking syllables though it's just it is, shorter yeah. three syllables. goddamn yeah. right and i'll give mary lou retton the respect she deserves i also want to give, give her falco. the business while you're at it yeah goddamn right i will yeah. I'll, I'll give her the, <laughs> the, the best ocho of her life um yeah. uh, falco by the way died in a car accident um in, in case you were wondering the the actual singer did? yeah the actual singer not the no dog shit. r.i.p not no the shit. dog but the singer no shit yeah so <laughs> I, I think he was a beloved figure over there. Like he was a huge yeah. star over there. So if you get a bunch of Falcos, I'm telling you yeah. why. And then he got killed yeah. in a car accident, and he was like a pimpy dude. So yeah, don't be so surprised it's, if it's you a, get a bunch of more Falcos coming up. Yeah, paying on. What you mean? Like recently he died? No, no, back in the day. Oh, so you think this is in memoriam? <laughs> yeah, this is. There was a lot of Falco fans in Europe. Um, when you you've got a lot of. Uh, you've got a lot of folks that are, you know, in our age, you know, in the late thirties, early forties, uh, you know, all the way up to 50 that, that were fans of that music back then that are prominent figures in mm-hmm. the dog industry, you know, so it stands to reason, I guess. You get a dog in the background. Would you, would you name that one? So this one is actually, uh, well, so here's a classic example, right? His, his original name when he came over here, uh, was Turner. 
which you know to me i was like fucking turner who who names her no turner's turner? the cop hooch is the goddamn yeah, dog hooch is the dog they should have named the, the dog hooch. Wrong with these people yeah. The, yeah this dog's name is turner so i i changed it to tigo um so that's uh, that's his name. He's a, an eight year old, seven eight year old Dutch Shepherd that uh, I'm actually just boarding for a, a client of mine. That uh, so he's he's just hanging out for me, uh, you know, for a couple of months while uh, while the client is is uh, away on business that couldn't take uh, couldn't take him with him. But gotcha. Is that a big thing with celebrities buying dogs that are trained and all that stuff from you? Yeah, I mean it it, it has become that for sure. Um, you know, there's a, a fairly long list. Um, you know, of, of either a list or folks like that, that, uh, you know, that want a dog, which, you know, sometimes it's a good fit. Uh, sometimes I, I shy away from it. it just, you know, like with anything, it depends on the individual, why they want the dog, what their original, uh, or their day-to-day dynamic is kind of the original reason for wanting it. Uh, all of those things kind of come into account, uh, you know, because, you know, for me, it's not, you know, there, there's plenty of, of customers out there in the high net worth uh, realm of people that you've never heard their name and never will that, that are going to offer a much more stable living environment that I obviously am going to prefer for the dog. So uh, that and just from an NDA standpoint, like, you know, most of the clients, uh, high lit, uh, A-list or, or uh, high net worth or, or whatever, most of them don't want, you know, me sharing uh, you know, that, that they have a dog from me or, of or course, that I yeah. sold them a dog anyway. So, you know, it's, it's not like you know, there's been a few celebrities that are, that are okay with it or even post about, you know, I got this dog from Mike or whatever, but most of them don't, you know, either have, have me sign an NDA or, or would rather not do it anyway. So to me, it's, it's not like there's a huge benefit from it anyway. So uh, for me, it's mostly about, you know, where is the dog going? How are they going to be used? Are they going to be well taken care of? Mm-hmm you know, is, is this environment going to provide a, a stable, uh, you know, environment that's, that's going to be conducive to the dog's, you know, overall well being, And that, that's the biggest concern. But what, what does a dog like that run you? Let's say you're an average Joe on the streets and you want one of those dogs. So to, to get one from me, it starts at 85 K, um, you know, so yeah, that's Which, worth uh, it though. Before, Shit. How, the dogs live for a long time. Yeah, I mean, I, everything's relative, right? I mean, you know, most of the clients that I have, you know, are the types of individuals that will spend that on a fucking hand in Vegas. Yeah. You know, so again, like to, to most people, they're like, you're out of your fucking mind. Hey, I get it. You know, these dogs aren't for most people. Sure. Um, you know, for the people that can afford it. And, and are, generally when people are in that type of position where they have that kind of money, they also attract a lot of negative attention from folks that want to separate them from that amount of money. And so if they have young kids or other vulnerabilities that uh, kind of, you know, go above and beyond what your average everyday suburban, uh, you know, household family is going to possess, uh, you know, then, then their need for security tends to be a little higher. You know, Yeah. But what if you have really forgetful parents that sometimes leave you when they go on vacation home alone, for example, yeah. like if they left you home alone and there were happened to be two burglars casing the neighborhood, I feel like Kevin could have used a, a dog from you. Well, the or, movie would have been over pretty quickly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It would have yeah, been a much I mean, better movie. I thought it should have ended after five minutes. I kind of hoped it would have, but you know, yeah. it's a classic now, right? The, uh, yeah, no, I mean, you know, it's, it's like with anything that, I look at security, you know, like most of us do, I think, and then it's kind of like an onion uh, or cold weather where you want as many layers as possible. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the dog is a, is a, is a very intimate layer. Uh, you know, the nice thing about them is, you know, unlike say alarms where it's letting you know that something's going on, but it's not reacting uh, right. or, you know, it can be bypassed depending on how simple or not it is uh, weapons. Similarly, um, you know, who has the stones to use them. Most of the people in those positions don't have the training or frankly, the, the capacity to, to do what needs to be done in an environment like that. Uh, armed guards uh, are human. They have families. They're, you know, they're driven by money and other things they can be gotten to uh, and bribed and corrupted. Uh, one of the unique things that I love about these dogs and why I'm so passionate about them is that, you know, they're, they're kind of a, a nice blend of all those things. You know, they, they're very good at early warning. It, it can't be taken and used uh, against you the way some, some weapons may be able to. It can't be bypassed similarly the, the same way that uh, an alarm system would be in terms of, uh, you know, cutting power or generating 
generator or, or hacking into it or whatever. And once you have that bond with that dog and that dog is yours, um, you know, and you've spent the time engaging and in, in building a relationship with that dog, then, then they don't give a fuck about anything else. You know, they're not driven by money. They're not driven by, you know, material things that a lot of human beings are, are going to be driven by. And so when you take a, a dog that genetically is, is, you know, a, a 10 out of 10 in all of the categories that I select the dog for. And then you spend several years building in all of these different training scenarios. And then you spend, you know, a couple of days turning the dog over and they spend a couple of weeks building that relationship rapport and bond with them. Now you've got a, a dog that, that, you know, truly is an incredible asset. And I've had a handful of clients that, that their dogs have actually, um, you know, thwarted being attacked or, or robbed or, uh, or, uh, violently fucking taken down and and to me there's there's really no no better compliment professionally than you know getting a call of saying you know hey I, you know these guys tried to carjack me and this dog fucking leveled one of them mm. you know or uh you know we had i mean i sold a dog to a lady um in a fairly rural area a few years ago that within a few days of, of her getting back with the dog there was uh she owned a ton of property and there's was, there was a, a lot of meth presence and a couple of tweakers, you know, tried to break into her house and it was literally just a few days after she got the dog and the dog, uh, you know, thwarted, thwarted them from, from doing anything further than what they did. And, and so there's a, a number of other examples of where the dogs have proved to be <coughs> very beneficial for people. But to me, you know, that, that makes all of it really worth doing um, because it is a lot of work. I mean, 85 K is a lot for a dog. I spend a lot on them to acquire them to begin with. And then I spend a lot of time, you know, with that dog in my house, one-on-one -on -one, day in day out for months before I deliver the dog in person, spend a few days with them. And then, you know, they, they have me on speed dial for the rest of that dog's fucking life too. So it, it's a big commitment on, on my end. Uh, there's, there's a lot that goes into it and uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty serious business. So, um, you know, there are, there are other companies out there that provide them some, some for more, some for less. Uh, for me, that's just kind of what it takes for me to, to put the time in to do it. And, and if people uh, are okay with that, then, then that's what the arangement is. Yeah. Look, if I had the 85 K, I mean, I shit, I'd drop that in a second. Cause that's a, that's a G wagon for most people. And this is actually going to protect yeah. you and your family. So I don't think well, I would. Shit, a G wagon's fucking 200. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. most nice cars at this point are several hundred thousand. Yeah. yeah. I, you still get that G wagon for 85. Though. I don't, I don't think I would because, uh, one, I don't think I personally need it, but that beyond that, everything you're describing, that's a lot of commitment to make. Like, I don't think people, sure people don't understand. Like if you, if you, if you're a person <clears> that's, high profile under threat of kidnap or robbery or something like that. Sure. Maybe do. if you, if you're the kind of person that would hire private security in the first place, a dog mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. But if you're not, yeah. it doesn't. And as much as I would like to have a cool ass dog like that, like I have no use for that. And when you take you're, you're literally, if you buy a dog like that and you don't have a use for it, you're literally robbing that dog of what it is meant to do. You yeah. Do you, mean? do you feel that way, Mike? It, it depends on the application. Uh, to me, I guess, ultimately, I, I view it like this, uh, is that, you know, to me, two things. One is that, you know, in terms of whether or not they, they should be doing what they do, the way I look at it is dogs are meant to augment humans uh, in, in a host of different capacities. And if if me putting a dog in somebody's house makes them feel way more fucking comfortable while their husband's out of town or, uh, you know, prevents one of their kids from from being fucked with or, yeah. or kidnapped or whatever mm. you know to me then then it's absolutely worth it you know um i, and, and I I'm agree here by to the provide way. that service for them but uh you know mm. and, and the the second part i guess is that you know what i look for in one of these dogs is a good happy medium you know we've all seen the the youtube clips and and uh you know cell phone videos of some ass eater from a fucking sheriff's department flying through a broken fucking window and, and nailing somebody um you know and while you know we present s similar scenarios to these dogs these dogs are are a, a much more what i would consider even keeled um you know, example of, of what a good, strong working dog is in terms of being confident enough to know what's, what's worth being threatened by, uh, but also, you know, being able to respond when they need to, but not overreacting. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the parts of my test is, is essentially looking at the dog uh, and, and trying to uh, 
you know, view them or, or get them to respond like a mirror, right? And, and so that when I first come out, I want to see a dog that's that's doing what I'm doing, basically. If I'm neutral and don't give a fuck and not paying much attention to the dog, the dog is responding in kind. And then I slowly ratchet up my response and me digging into them and starting to put mental and physical pressure, environmental pressure, predatorial pressure on the dog and get them to a point where now they're starting to get pissed off. The same way, you walk into a restaurant and, and some guy's just sitting there, maybe glances up quick and goes back to his business. That guy looks at you like this and then he's fucking looking at you like this. Then he starts to stand up and he's fucking eye, eye fucking you and eyeballing you and bowing you up. And, and now you're starting to be like, what the fuck are you staring at? I want to see that same thing out of the dog. And so, you know, there's a lot of examples of dogs that just a little bit of eye contact or, or conflict or confrontation, the dog <laughs> loses their shit and wants to fucking come up loot. Or they have such a, an, a high amount of prey drive where all they want to do is use their nose to fucking search. Those candidates don't make good candidates for this. You know, a dog with enough prey drive to do the work, enough defense mechanism or defensive forward aggression when pushed uh, to be able to do the work uh, needs to be there, but it, but it needs to be very balanced. If you think of like a, a stereo equalizer, you know, you've got your different levels is, is that that's kind of how I view the, the different working traits. And so a dog that I'm going to source for a family is going to be a little different in terms of where those levels are than a dog for a high level soft uh, or, or FBI unit or whatever. Uh, in terms of, you know, wasting the dog, you know, again, it's, it's, you know, you're obviously entitled to, to look at it that way. I view it very simply as that, you know, dogs are generally pretty social creatures. Mm -hmm. And if, if the dog is well-trained in an environment where they're being well taken care of, well-fed, exercised, mentally and physically engaged, that dog's going to be pretty fucking happy and, and well taken care of. And so if they're, if they're taken care of, and they're taking care of the family, then, then that makes me happy. And, and I've seen plenty of dogs that, that outside of being worked a lot had a pretty miserable fucking existence yeah. uh, with, different, with different working departments. I would far rather the dog not do as much work and be in a family where they're fucking appreciated and really well taken care of and, and taken care of their family than a dog that gets worked not, you know, nine times a fucking week and otherwise sits in a fucking kennel run losing his goddamn mind uh, right. other than that, you know? So to me, like with most things, it's, it's how you look at it and it's all relative and, and, you know, there's some gray area there, but yeah. See, Dan's not married. He doesn't have <clears> kids <throat> and he carries a loaded gun everywhere you go. So like Dan is fine, but let's, let's say me, right? I got a, I got a wife and two kids. Let's say I call you and I, and I buy this dog. What is the process and how long does it take for the dog to become comfortable at my house? And, and then you leave essentially and say, Hey, <laughs> you're on your own with the dog. Yeah, so it's it's about a six month process from the time we have the initial conversation and I get all of the specifics from you so that when now I'm looking for the dog, I know exactly, you know, I, I have you and your family, your situation, the dynamic, mm -hmm. I have that in the back of my mind while I'm looking for the dog. I'm not going to pre-select dogs and have them sitting in a kennel run, you know, waiting to be purchased. I don't, I do it one at a time, you know, in succession that way, first come, first serve. And, uh, you know, we, we execute that contract. I go find the dog. I bring that dog back and I bring it into my house with my family and, and put it through all the paces that it's going to be in terms of mimicking that scenario. And then I come deliver that dog when it's ready, <coughs> excuse me, to be delivered. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. Yeah. Coronavirus. I'm, reco got coronavirus. I'm recovered from it. <laughs> uh, so, you know, once it's ready to be delivered, uh, I bring the dog and I spend usually a few days, usually two or three days. Uh, in some instances, if they've got you know, a client that maybe has two or three young kids under the age of five and several other pets, you know, it may take a couple extra days to kind of, you know, gently massage the dog into that environment a little slower. But uh, from that point, you know, there, there certainly comes a point where it's now counterproductive for me to be there. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, because the, the dog is not going to bond with the family, the new family, the way that it needs to while I'm still there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I need to, to survey everything, make sure that everything's going to be conducive for the dog. I demonstrate how to handle it, all the things that it can do, what not to do, and then slowly kind of turn the, the reins over to the individuals. And, and then I, I step back and I'll usually stick around for a day or two and, and stay in the area in case I need to come back uh, if they run into any problem or whatever. And then, and then I go back and uh, usually that first, I'd say, Say, you know, five days to two weeks that I'm gone uh, is when that settling in and, and um, you know, orientation process kind of takes place with the dog where within a couple of weeks, the dog is, is really well settled in and bonded with everybody and, and kind of firing on all cylinders. But, um, you know, to your point, um, you know, it is responsibility, though. And, and you know, to me, I, I certainly don't shy away from that. I, I 
uh, talk myself out of sales on a regular basis for that reason is that, you know, if, if you're looking at it purely from a hood ornament or peacock feather standpoint, no, you shouldn't have one. Uh, but to me, it, it's no different than the responsibility that comes with carrying a fucking concealed firearm yeah. or, or having an alarm that's connected to, to the fire department and, and the police department is that, you know, if you trip that fucker cause you're being careless and you're drunk one night and you fucking set it and then walk outside to piss or puke or fuck your girlfriend or whatever like that, that comes in that with, order. With probably, responsibility. Yeah. 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 Uh, with a concealed firearm. Right. So, uh, <laughs> you know, all, all of these mechanisms come with responsibilities, you know, and, and this is no different. So, you know, to me, it's, I, I'm not going to shy away from that point. It is, you know, while they have a lot of pet like qualities, there are some qualities that they have that are not pet like and that you do need to, to be respectful of. And, and what are those? To. Just mostly from a body language standpoint. So, like, as an example, let's say, you know, you deliver the dog a couple months goes by the dog's fucking great. Everything's going well. And now your your fucking uncle comes over you know, that the dog's never met, you know, it's Thanksgiving, he he ties one on and wants to wrestle with you and tickle your fucking kids and whatever in front of the dog, like, things like that can present problems, because the dog has no fucking idea who this guy is, you know. Uh, and so, you know, little things like that, or, or, you know, if you're gonna have a sleepover for the first time, this dog's gonna have been around kids, my kids, their friends, other kids around our neighborhood, things mm -hmm. of that nature, you know, but the, the neighborhood lab that, you know, can have the three-year-old toddler dive bomb onto like it's WWE and not right. do anything. <laughs> you know, th th those, those are things that I, I would not recommend with these dogs, you know, stepping on their nuts or smacking them with a wiffle ball bat or, or whatever that a lot of these little dipshit uh, kids end up doing because their parents let, let them be little terrorists around their pets because their, their pets just, you know, aren't going to do anything about it. Whereas these dogs, you, you do have to realize like, ultimately it's still a fucking living breathing animal and, and it's designed both in both genetics and from a training standpoint to be able to take on a, a physically capable individual who is intent on hurting the dog and or the family and not scared of it you know and, and if you run into somebody like that you've got to have a pretty tough strong dog to deal with that and, and ultimately defeat that individual and so that same dog is only going to put up with so much shit from anybody uh, you know, including the drunk uncle or the, the shithead, you know, kid's friend that comes over and wants to, you know, throw rocks at your dog or, or be a little asshole or whatever. And so uh, you just need to be a little more <laughs> mindful of stuff like that. Yeah, I feel like uh, <clears throat> I'd probably just let it happen. If, if it was an uncle. Yeah. If, it, if it's an uncle shouldn't be tickling your kids no, anyways, you know, if it's a child, I'll crack the kid in the head before he gets bitten. But if it's an adult doing stupid shit to a working dog like that, I'm going to let the, the guy get bit. Yeah. Sure. Let it go. Yeah. Because go fuck him. Like you shouldn't, first of all, you yeah. shouldn't be treating animals that way in the first place. Right. Secondly, yeah, I, not a working yeah, dog for Christ's sake. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I mean, more from like, you know, let's say it's, you know, somebody you served with comes over. The, dog, it's, the My point is somebody that the dog has never met right. and maybe he <clears> starts <throat> fiddle fucking with you. You guys start horse playing or or whatever. You know, um, it, it's it's situations like that where if you put yourself like if you just always put yourself in the dog's shoes and, and project mm -hmm. and think, how does this dog knowing what his genetics are and, and what he's been trained to do? How is he going to perceive this this scenario? If you just always think that way. You almost can't fuck that up. And I say almost because there are, you know, people that will manage to fuck that up. But, uh, you know, but generally speaking, if you just think of it that way, like, okay, this dog has never met this person, even though I've known him for 30 fucking years and I, I went to war with him, like, mm -hmm. he probably shouldn't pick me up and fucking, you know, we shouldn't grapple after nine beers watching a UFC fight right with the dog, you know, it's stuff like that, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's, <clears throat> you always wonder um, what it actually is. Can you dispel the myth that uh, that dogs hate black people? Can you do that? Is that a myth? It is. The, uh, I, well, yeah. is it you? You tell me. Like I, you always I, hear it. Here, like everybody who would come over to that because I, I, I had dogs growing well, up. Here, here, here's what I will say: is that if if the dog has been raised around mostly black people or, or people with darker skin and then sees, sees white people, it's going to re respond the same way. Yep. You know, dog, dogs are simple association animals to the, to the highest degree, you know, so it, it's, it's far more about what that a plus B equals C scenario is. So if that dog is, is used to seeing, you know, you see it the same way with working dogs when they go overseas, 
right? Is that, you know, a certain culture dresses a certain way. Maybe it has darker skin or lighter skin compared to what it's used to. It may have, you know, based on regional diets, you know, there may be a, a specific body odor to that, that region or that part of the country that the dog is picking up on all of those things. And so, you know, dogs are, are almost like rain man in terms of being able to, to discern disparities and, and, and differences in pattern, you know, and, and so they're, they're, they're masters at being able to read environments and say that, that isn't fucking what I'm used to. Let me focus on that. Uh, and so that's really all it is, is that ah, if the dog is, right. has, has been around nothing but white people and now all of a sudden somebody with dark skin comes up, they're like, wait a minute, that fucking looks different, you know? Uh, but again, on the transverse, if the dog grows up in a, in a, uh, a black community where it's almost never seen anybody white. And now one of our cracker asses shows up, the dogs and be like, who the fuck is that? Yeah. You know, so uh, that's really all it is. So the human version of that is if you're out there and you see somebody with different color skin than you yeah. and you immediately feel hatred, then you're as dumb as a fucking dog essentially. No, uh, uh, well, of it's course it's not even necessary. Our UPS I mean, not- man was black. And every time our dog came to the door, it, it would he'd be like, dude, dogs hate black people man and he always said that growing up and i was like eh, maybe he's right i don't know i'll ask you're the first dog trainer we've ever had on the on the show so i mean just just because a dog is stimulated by something and barking doesn't mean that they show hatred for it either right that, yeah. that's another another misconception you know because dogs dogs ability to communicate is far more primitive than ours are you know and so they have a couple of mechanisms to to alert either each other or you to the presence of something that they're maybe just unsure of or something mm-hmm. that they haven't seen before well, so again well, and that's one of that's one of those differences between human beings and, and dogs and that you know while they possess similar uh, emotions or emotions mm-hmm. in a similar way to to we do they're nowhere near as complex they don't have the ability to logic or reason something you know one of the most this the, one of the simplest things that i can i can share to uh, inform people or try to get you to think the way that a dog does is that you know we think in a language, right? We dream in a language. We, we communicate overwhelmingly verbally. Uh, but if you see somebody that's, that's depressed or having the worst fucking day of their life, it can be from across a parking lot and you've never met that person. You can be like, damn, that dude is having a shitty day, right? So if it's that easy for us as, as overwhelmingly verbal communicators to discern body language, now imagine a dog that doesn't fucking think in a language. Right. I mean, think about how hard that is to even wrap your mind around not thinking in a language and making an A plus B equals C simple association with every stimulus that you come in contact with. And now taking it further is that is that that's why they are so incredibly fucking talented at reading body language, you know, and so that's what it what it boils down to mostly is that they don't think in a language. They're viewing everything as an association. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Will you uh, last last question here? Uh, were you happy about the exposure that that Conan the dog got for that El Baghdadi thing? Was that like a a coming it's out mixed. moment for that that community? Yeah. I mean, yes and no. I mean, it's it's good in terms of you know the the dogs being recognized for how remarkable of, of an asset that they are, and and you know from a force protection force multiplier standpoint, how many you know, humans lives they've saved in, in the work that they do. Obviously there's a transverse uh, negative to that. And that it, it makes a lot of people that, that, you know, should not own a, a working breed, especially as a puppy. You know, I mean, to me, it's no different than, than really anything that requires a certain level of skill set mm-hmm. to be able to, to do uh, <laughs> is that, you know, you get these people that buy a, a nice working bred puppy and say, well, fuck, I'll just do it myself. Like, I'm not going to drop, you know, upwards of six figures for a a genetically gifted dog with impeccable three years of training. I'll just buy a nine week old fucking, uh, you know, bred dog from, from that genetic pool and do it myself. It's akin to saying, I'll just run to Home Depot and buy the fucking lumber and I'll, I'll frame my own fucking house. How hard can that be? (laughs) Like, if you've never done that, you know, I mean, that's, that's really what it's, what it's doing or, or bricking a fucking shed, you know, or your house. Like, but fuck, I can do that. Like you can watch people lay bricks that are good at it and be like, dude, that's not that fucking hard. Uh, or like on a sculptor mm-hmm. wheel, like you'll, you'll end up looking like ghost finger fucking yourself, mm-hmm. uh, you know, trying to do it if you've never done it before. Well, and so with a puppy, it's the same thing. Like there's a lot of technical aspects to it. Uh, you know, that if you, if you don't know what to look for and what you're doing and when to reinforce not versus extinguish, et cetera, you're going to fuck that up, you know, and, and the dog is, is going to be both wasted, uh, and ultimately cause a bunch of fucking problems. Yeah. I mean, if I was to train a dog. It would base, it would learn how to smoke a lot of weed and and watch Netflix. I guess I don't yeah. know. Like I don't know what I would. It sounds teach like it. a hell of an Instagram profile. Ah, uh, be great. My my smoke. Instagram caption, like on my profile, says the biggest piece of shit you never heard of. Yeah, 
And I got that from actually, I got it from Bert Koontz. <laughs> and it's true. Yeah, it is true. It's true. Uh, Mike, this is the point in the show where we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is uh, right. someone who has inspired you, can be a man, woman, or a dog in this case, uh, it's to help you become the man you are today. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? Uh, I got to go with my fucking parents, honestly. Uh, they're going to have to co-share it because uh, George and Sandy are the reason that uh, that I'm who I am. You know, good, bad, and indifferent. You know, it, it, they they set the the standard for uh, for everything that uh, that I I learned and, and kind of um, you know was was driven towards growing up. And uh, you know, the, the way that they they parented, I, I try to take a page out of that. I, I don't think I do half the job that they do or did, uh, but uh, yeah, my, my parents are, were fucking awesome growing up and, uh, and really just really set the fucking bar on how to, how to do it in my opinion. But that's awesome. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, Mike, you're a hell of a guy, man. An, an unbelievably interesting guest. And, uh, you've got one of the best podcasts out there. If you're not a listener, uh, go ahead and subscribe to, uh, Mike drop with Mike Ritlin. Uh, please come back and join us again. Will you? I appreciate it uh, very much. Thanks for uh, for the kind words, and uh, you guys keep up the goddamn good work. If I may, uh, plug the fucking uh, just teamdog.pet, trichos.com, and warriordogfoundation.org. Those are the three things that uh, that I'm big on. Uh, feel free to check uh, all three of those out for <clears throat> for all the appropriate reasons. I won't belabor you with all mm -hmm. the all the bullshit behind it. No, no worries. Yeah. And where can everybody find you on social media? Just at M Ritland uh, on Instagram, uh, same on Twitter, and just Mike Ritland on Facebook. I mean, if you just Google my name, you'll find you know all of the the different platforms mm -hmm. uh, and where to find me and everything that's going on. But. Mike Drop Podcast. Mike Drop Podcast, and also when when you Google your name, uh, you and Epstein are now tied together forever. Mm -hmm. So enjoy yeah. that. If, if there's a guy I want to be tied to, it's that fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's just my goddamn luck. <laughs> Mike Ritland, Anthony, Anthony Holloway. I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.